Hey guys, it's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And welcome back to our in-depth adventure through Elden Ring. So I'd like to start this rainy episode off by thanking you guys for getting so engaged in the comments and sharing what you know. It means a lot to me when you guys do that, because I know that there are a lot of people who click on these videos because they need a form of guidance and some help with some certain areas of the game. Or maybe they just don't want to miss all the items. And they just need that coverage, you know? But I don't know everything there is to know about this game. I've only played through it one time, and I feel like I covered a pretty good amount in the time I went through it, but I guarantee that there are even things that I missed. And I'm pretty thorough in these games. So I really appreciate you guys sharing your experiences in the comments, letting me know when I miss things, and weighing in on the things that I explain, and letting me know how they work for you, and creative ways that you can use them as well, because I know that those people who are relying on me and these videos for the help through this game are also going to read the comments, and it serves them just as well to be able to read those things. So thank you for that. And would you look at that? Suddenly it's clear and sunny. I think it's morning. Yep. Alright, so. In typical fashion, like I mentioned before, I'm going to start these episodes off with the map. So... We have covered a really good amount of the surrounding areas of Agia Lake. So what we're going to do in this episode is I want to cover this dungeon that's right here. And it's going to have a familiar face in it that some of you may or may not have positive affirmations with. And we're going to follow it all the way back. And then there are some items up through here near the bottom of Storm Hill that I want to go grab. And there's also a cave way up here in this body of water that I would also like to cover if we can get to it today. So, without further ado, let's get moving. And one other thing before I leave. We actually have the option to talk to Melina right now, so let's do that first, just to get it out of the way. This tiny golden aura is the grace of the Erd Tree. This light once shone in the eyes of your tarnished brethren, but now it is all that guides you. Or so I hear. You can see them, can't you? The rays of grace that guide you through your burden. Upon the cliff in Castle Stormvale is a shard bearer, a demigod who inherited a fragment of the shattered Elden Ring. If the rays of grace signal the castle, then the Elden Ring beckons you. As an ally by pact, I pray that you are fit to face the challenge presented by the ring. Upon the cliff, a demigod. If the rays okay. of the Elden as an ally pray to face... All right, so she's very gentle in nature. And that dialogue is super duper easy to miss, because when you sit down at the grace, clearly there are a lot of options, right? So it's like, how are you going to notice that there's already like eight of these things? How are you going to notice that a ninth one showed up to talk to Melina, right? Because this is, I mean, you've never had this many options in a, in a Souls game in a bonfire. I think Dark Souls 2 probably was the only other one that had that many options or close to it, but this one definitely has the most. So today, we're going to take advantage of this game being an open world. And we're going to, instead of choosing some linear path to go on, to get closer towards the boss, which is over here in Stormvale, we're going to ride over in this general area, and we're going to find some of the loot over there. Now, over here, there's one thing I wanted to check out, actually. So there's the Cave of Knowing, the Stranded Graveyard, that's where we were, that's underground. Right here in this general area, we haven't really explored any of this side of the lake yet. I think we touched it for just a second, but I want to make sure we didn't overlook any items or anything, because there are bats over here. Okay, yep, there's one. So we got a rune. And again, with the bats, don't waste your time fighting them, just get in and get out. I mean, especially because the item they were guarding, it was just a tier 1 rune. It's nothing super important. 
and then we got our scarabs here and yes unlike the lizards these guys do respawn an infinite amount of times like they are there specifically for you I already beat all these guys. I don't give a shit about your encampment. I'm going to ride through it disrespectfully, breaking your shit in the process. Yeah, that's right. I already beat you guys. I ain't even worried about it. But I am going to steal your butterflies. So there's one. And two. And I like how Torrent just breaks shit. <laughs> it's the coolest thing ever. It's so metal. It's really useful for those little skulls, too, that have the runes in them. Alright. So, we are approaching Storm Hill, which is where the giants are up there. You can usually find lightning striking the ground over here. And when you see the lightning, please watch out. <laughs> it will hurt you. <laughs> it is not just for show. And you can pick up the Fulgur Blooms, which are a nice... A nice, uh, craftable item that will help us out. Yeah, we're doing okay. They still hit us really hard, though. We are still in the crappy amount of health. Woo, that was close. Yeah! Come here, boy. Oh, yeah. And we got our flask back. So... Pay attention to this guy. You notice how he's not just a goat. He is a ram. He's got the horns. They are aggressive. They are considered like, I guess, the pack leader of the goats. And if you go near them, they will chase you down. Just like a, a real goat would. Alright, I'm not going to grab all of them, but I'm going to grab some of these Fulgur Blooms just so we can have them for later. And let's scale this thing real quick. See what's going on up here. So we're going to take that spring to get up there in just a second, but there are a couple more items over here that I want to go grab. So there's this one. And that giant right there, he will use the roar attack. So be careful. And by the roar attack, I mean he literally just yells at you and it creates like a, a sonic wave. And it will do damage to you. It's not just for show. Okay, let's head over here for a second. And this is the spot I was talking about. We're going to follow this ravine all the way down there to where there is a super annoying cave with lots of bats in it. And we're not going to go there right this second. And we're going to save that for second. As in we're going to do a different cave first. But uh, we are going to do it regardless. And man, there's some shitty weather in this episode. Alright, so we've got our wolf pack over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the item, okay? I just want the golden rune. I don't want to fight the wolves because it's not very good payoff, right? I do want to grab this grace. We're for sure going to grab this guy. And we will rest to reset the enemies. And where I am right now is here. I am located directly at the tip of this ravine called Murkwater Coast. And the cave that we're going to end up going into is called Murkwater Cave. Makes sense, right? So to get to Murkwater Cave, you can jump down into this spring. It would be probably easiest if you did that. There are bears. You gotta watch out for the bears because they aren't so much a problem later. But uh, right now, early on in the game... They hit kind of hard. So, I'm looking directly at where the entrance of Murkwater Cave is going to be. And once we go down there, it's going to trigger an NPC event. It's going to be really cool. Now, we've already been here. This is the encampment that uh, I got my ass kicked in, if you recall. And that was where we, I think that's where we picked up one of the cookbooks. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this spring up. And I don't recommend fighting these giants up here. I mean, they're worth over a thousand runes apiece. So, I mean, it's 
if you can fight them and you feel good about doing it, go right ahead. But I'm not going to worry about it right this second. I just want this item. So we got a beast liver. And now what we're going to do, and they hurt each other, by the way. It's pretty cool. I'm going to show you this right here. So there's this statue here. Anytime you see these glowing statues, you need to only grab a big enemy, and that will happen. They will break them. Now, there's nothing you can do to break those things. Like, no matter what you do, you can't break them. But large enemies can, and we got a free smithing stone because of that. So again, this area that we're in right now, this spot, is called Storm Hill. Don't mind me grabbing these stones and running for my life. Jeez, these giants, they want a piece of me, like, really bad. Anyway, I want to point something out to you guys. This big structure right here, where I was picking up the ruin fragments, I do not recommend coming here at night. So, when you see this structure, and you know that you're in this spot on the map, avoid coming here at night at all costs. Because if you come here at night... Deathbird will spawn, and Deathbird is not necessarily like a crazy, disgustingly difficult boss, but he's going to be too much for you if you're new. I promise you that. He's pretty annoying to fight. So let's grab this Grace. We'll rest and reset the Giants. And we'll talk to this guy. This is the War Master's Shack. Not seen you before. Name's Bernard. Tarnished, just like you. Let me ask you something. Are you here in the lands between to take up the fight? Does your faith in the guidance of Grace hold firm, despite the collapse of the Golden Order? So you recognize that weapon he's got? Yeah, that is the Zweihander. Yes, you're a Tarnished through and through. Takes me back. But that's a quality needed now more than ever. Any interest in bearing the torch of my battle arts? All I know is the sword. Picked up a fair few tricks in my time, too. Now's the time to pass them on. To a good and proper tarnished, like you. Okay, and this guy becomes a vendor for Ashes of War, right? And you can just pay regular runes for him. It's pretty awesome. So, there's two different forms of the stamp. We have the slash one, and this one is the upward cut one. There's the kick, which is often found on crossbow weapons. There's endure, which is good for tanking. War cry. You have spinning slash, which is on halberds. Impaling thrust, which comes on a couple stabbing weapons, like the, uh, the heavy thrusting swords. Quick step is really good. And storm blade is good, too. So I'm going to buy this. It doesn't seem great, right? Like, it's just a straight-up no-skill, but trust me. Sometimes you want to put that on your shield because you want to uh, be able to use your weapon art and your main hand without two-handing your weapon. So, it'll come in handy. And the rest of these, I'm not super worried about. There's a myriad of battle arts in these lands that I've yet to discover. Mementos of all the warriors who raised their arms in battle. Lost and died. A fine tale, all told of true chivalric romance. That's how I fell in love with the sword and the arts of combat. It grants meaning even to falling in battle, to death itself. And we're also going to run into another guy that has this exact armor, oddly enough. Well, until we meet again. Okay. So that is going to be our Art of War vendor. And this is where we are on the map. We are just a hair above the gate front. I know I'm in the no-no zone. I know that. And we're not going to go much further up here, but there is one more NPC that I want to talk to while we're up here, just because we're up here. I'm not worried about these guys. Ugh! Oh, come on. I was so close. I just want the item. Alright, gentlemen. 
There we go. Give me my five fire arrows. That will definitely help us in a couple situations just ahead. Now we're going to go to this other shack, and there should be another NPC here that has a very important item that I want. And when you're up here and the wind is blowing and stuff like this, you're going to run into some interesting events like wolf ambushes, where the wolves howl and then they fall from the sky. Um, it's it's kind of weird. It's hard to explain. Like, you don't see them anywhere. They're not hiding up on the cliffs here or anything like that. Like, there's no... There's no, like, giveaway of where they are. But, trust me, they're there, and it happens. So this girl. We definitely want to talk to this girl. Everyone's been grafted. Everyone who came with me. They crossed the sea for me. They fought for me. <laughs> Only to have their arms taken. Their legs taken. Even their heads taken. Taken and stuck to the spider. Did you know, if you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid? It's quite a lark when you think about it. And then you get the sit sideways gesture. So, before I talk to her again, let's make some key connections with what she just said. She talked about being grafted. Like your arms and legs and your head being grafted to the spider. That rings a bell, right? I mean, the first boss, the first thing we saw in this game was the grafted scion. And I would definitely compare that thing to a spider, right? I mean, it definitely had eight arms at least and more than one head. So that's probably what she's referring to. You're all on your own, are you? And heading to Stormvale Castle, enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Oh, you've come to be one? With the spider? Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs. Or your head. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. Oh, I know. Can you take this little one along with you? And just like that, we got a free spirit ash. The jellyfish. The poor thing deserves someone braver than myself. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It'll be glad of your company, I think, the little one. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know. It was a pleasure to see. Oh, tell them I'm finally getting. The How strange. So, it, it took me a minute to really kind of wrap my head around what she was talking about, but she talks about pain and chrysalids and. Once we get into Stormvale, we'll cover more of that. But hey, what do you know? Stone Sword Key. So that's the first one we've actually found. So we get on the horse. Are we going to get a wolf ambush? Yep, there it is. Where the hell do they come from? Like, I don't get it. Alright, anyway, not important. Small fries. This is important. Remember when I pointed this out to you guys. I said the only reason they give you a visual of this tree as soon as you get out of the tutorial is because they want you to recognize it because of this. You get a golden seed anytime you see one of these. And there's even one in the game that has two. Double the fun. Gimme. Anyway. Alright. So this here is the path that you would normally take up through here to get to uh, Stormvale Castle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover just a little bit of the surrounding area here. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite bosses in the freaking game, the Crucible Knight, is at that Everjail. We're not going to mess with him yet. He is uber strong. Like, I'm telling you what, he'll kick your ass, especially if you're not ready. 
this guy. I want to fight this guy real quick. So this guy, oddly enough, he already starts at like half health, which is funny. Like, I don't know why. But here's what you do with these guys. These fire giants, you attack them where it looks like it will hurt, which is uh, their feet. Now he's got a multi-slam attack like that, but don't worry about it. It's relatively easy to get away from. It's his large sweeping attacks that suck. The strategy with this guy is to hit him enough times in the foot to either kill him or knock him down. That poor goat deserved better than that, by the way. Oh, wow. I don't want to die. I said I don't want to die. Alright. I promise you he's not this much trouble. He's just being an asshole to me. And the rock is, like, assisting him. Look, man. There we go. <laughs> He'll give me a flashback. Or two. That'll work. Alright, you don't get anything for killing that guy typically. He has a rare drop. Sometimes, and I mean sometimes on legendary occasions, he will drop his weapon. Which is like this giant stone golem halberd, I believe it's called. It is classified as a colossal weapon, so it is not easy to wield at all. Like, it's heavy and requires a significant amount of strength. So, it's very much not ideal for you to try to use that weapon in the beginning of the game. So, even if you are lucky enough to get it, doesn't necessarily mean it's smart to use it. Like, it's easier to get the damn stats for the halberd than it is for that thing. And by halberd, I mean the golden halberd. So, we got another starlight shard. And what I will do here is I will just scale the cliff real quick so that way... If there's an extra item somewhere nearby, we can grab it. And then we're going to make our way back down, and we're going to head towards the cave. Uh, so here's an interesting little spot. i got some jellyfish up here, as you can see. And we're going to go over to this little graveyard real quick. And make our way up. And again, these jellyfish are not hostile. I don't recommend attacking them, because once you attack one of them... It'll piss off the rest of them, and they'll start shooting poison at you. So, just like before, I'm not going to mess with the skeleton enemies, because they're kind of a pain in the ass. And they're really not worth fighting, because you don't really get anything from them. They don't drop a bunch of runes, they don't drop, like, a badass weapon. The Reaper version of them does drop a scythe, which is great for dexterity builds, but I'm going to be kind of a mix of strength and dexterity, so I'm not going to prioritize trying to get that thing. All I'm doing is scaling for this real quick. We got some more ashes, and then for whatever reason these two jellyfish are hostile, so ow, I just want my item. Oh shit. Come on. There we go. The magic grease. Shit. I'm about to get poisoned. <laughs> Alright. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about scaling the cliffs again. We can just drop down. So, those things are out of the way. We've grabbed them. Now we don't have to worry about it again. <laughs> and then there should be maybe one more item right here that's worth grabbing by these uh, poles here. Usually. Maybe not this time, though. That's fine. It's all good. We do have that guy right there. He would be worth getting. Because we are hurt. We need more flasks. Hell yeah. Okay, listen, Pooch. You see what I mean? It does not take much to get to a point where you have a weapon that kills the wolves in one hit. They're not a problem. This guy 
is a problem. So here's what I'll do. It would pay to backstab this guy, so I'm going to do that. And there we go. Get a nice hit on him there. Yeah. It's alright. I don't like you either. Okay. Make short work of that guy. And we're going to grab this. There should be a chest in here. There's more enemies, though. Man, I was proned. How did you see me? I guess he didn't. <laughs> That's all right. Funny. Works for me. We get this guy. Get rid of him and use our iframes with the backstab to avoid the damage. And we'll cheese this guy. Easy peasy. Make sure there's no more guys. We'll get this chest. Hell yeah. The arrows reach talisman. So what that does is it increases the effective range of the bow, which is great. I don't think I mentioned this one. We got this from the Stone Digger Troll, and this enhances roars and breath attacks. So it would be ideal to wear this talisman if you had an Ash of War that, uh, like Barbaric Roar or something like that. It would increase the buff that you get for using that Ash of War. And then, likewise, breath attacks as well. So if you were to... Use dragon spells, the ones we had mentioned before when we were at the dragon church. You would also be pretty well off. So no items. That's perfectly fine though. Oh my goodness, I'm excited to fight the Crucible Knight. I mean, I'm like really excited to fight him. He's one of my favorite bosses in the game. And we're going to kick his ass, it's going to be great. Okay, so now what I would like to do is I'd like to get away from the wolves. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the Agile Lake North. And just to show you guys everything that we just did, we ran all the way through this open field area. This is where we talked to the girl. And this is where we talk to the guy that sells the weapon arts. We beeline from him straight to here. And then we covered some of this up in here. And then this foresty area right here, this is where the jellyfish were to give you a visual guide. And now we are back here at Agio Lake North, which is where Knight's Cavalry was. So the way we're going to get to this cave is we are going to go straight out into the water. And we're going to hug the cliffside so Agio doesn't show up. And ruin everybody's day. And then we're going to do this really badass NPC invasion event. Um, wait a second. Hold on just a moment. I have 6,000 runes on me. I should probably spend these on a level up or something, don't you think? Might be smart. The cave that we're going to go to is not difficult whatsoever. But the NPC invasion can get a little hairy. So I'm going to go to 20 decks. That's better. Gimme. Now this, of all Souls games, in particular, I don't recommend running around with your entire bank account on you. It's for the same reason that you don't keep all of your money in your checking account. Because if you lose it, you lose it. That's all there is to it. So keep that shit in your savings account. I don't know what the savings account equivalent is for this game. But, uh, I don't know. I guess the analogy we could use is... Shit, spend your money before somebody kills you. So, I guess I could fight these guys. I mean, it's... It's fine. Let's take these guys down. So this is our first encounter with skeleton guys. Get rid of the crossbow guys. Well, if you can. The knights look fancy and scary, but they're not. 
So you gotta hit these guys twice. It's bullshit. Like, really it is. Watch this. He's gonna die. Then he turns blue on the ground. Ooh, did I get him? Nice. Alright, I'm gonna get these two. You have to hit them while they're in that glowing blue state in order to actually kill them. Now, there are some weapons in this game that have, like, a sort of holy ability to kill them in one shot. Instead of having to kill them twice. But, uh... We don't have that. And it's also an incantation that you can cast on your weapon, which is kind of cool. So that way, everybody on your team has it. And that's one thing I really like about this game. I like that they changed that up a little bit. A lot of the incantations that you can cast on a faith build are party-based instead of solo. And I don't know why I'm getting on Torrent because it's literally going to kick me off of him right now. Like, as soon as we're in reach of this NPC fight or invasion, it's going to kick me off. There we go. So I'm going to heal up. So, Bloody Finger Nerahius. Nerid, Nerigis. I don't know what to call this guy. All I know is that we're about to get some help and it's going to be really cool. Now, this guy has a ranged attack that is bad. It's bad, bad, bad. And you don't want to block it. You absolutely want to dodge it. If it isn't Nerius, the Bloody Finger. That, ooh, it's bad. <laughs> it causes a lot of wee buildup. You don't want to get hit by it. Look at that. We procced bleed on a bleed enemy. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we're super badass, and we killed that guy before the help could show up. Um... <laughs> I probably should have waited for Euro. That's my bad, guys. Um, but it was the guy with the crazy spiderweb shaped, spider head, or spiderweb mushroom shaped helmet thing that said, don't fight the dragon. It was that guy. And that was his dialogue that you heard him talking. And when you beat that encounter, you get Reduvia, which is a cool weapon. It's great if you want to experiment with arcane builds. Um, it's got the Reduvia Bloodblade for its weapon art, which you shoot a blade of blood that does purely physical damage, but it causes bleed buildup like crazy. It's it's really good. And that guy had two of them. He was power stancing them. So before we go into that cave right there, which you saw the entrance to, we're going to run over here because this is where Yura is going to be. Here he is. Ah, we meet again. To have fought Nereus and live. You must have seen your share of battle. I am Yura, as you might recall. Hunter of bloody fingers, tarnished, held in thrall by cessblood. Zealots, who stalk their own, you stay the path. You are certain to face more of them. Just remember, no kinship with their elk remains. Their madness precludes it. Don't let your emotions stay your blade. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. If fate permits. Alright. So, that's our second dialogue with Yura. And it's an important one because he talks about bloody fingers. We've officially got a term, right? Like we know what they're called now. There's going to be more skeletons right here. I mean, fuck these guys. Just grab the item, right? And then keep heading this way. There should be one more item. Then we got that cave right there. So we're going to do these back to back, right? We'll head into the one back here first, and then we'll run back over and do the one in the corner there. And I pick up the mushrooms every time I see them because you should. It's important to keep lots of materials on you because you never know what kind of situation you're going to get into where you're like, damn it, if I just had a fire pot. Like, my goal 
is to keep you out of those situations. So, pick everything up. Except this. These things, the early flowers are not important. But, smoldering butterflies. Butterflies of every kind. Important. So, here's Murkwater Cave, the one I was talking about before. And we're going to see a familiar face in here. And I'll rest at the grace. Poison Moss, right out of the gate. Now, usually, if something gives you a specific material for an ailment of a certain sort, it means there's going to be poison in that place, right? And it's never the case with these dungeons. There's not always going to be poison. Sometimes there is, but not always. So, this is an interesting dungeon. Do you see these? Well, you probably can't. Let me put my torch on. Do you see that? So that is going to make noise. It's literally just a chain with bells sticking out of the ground. There's two of them right here. As soon as you ring that, it's going to cause all of them to come running out of the back there. And when I say all of them, I mean like seven or eight of them. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So let's wait for this guy to do his little run again. i to lock on. Let's get him. I don't think so. And now, they're all still in here, which is great for us. So, let's make some fire pots, huh? And we'll equip them. We have four of them. Great. I don't mind wasting all four of my... Yay! Great. Now I'm poisoned. <laughs> Bad deal. Alright, whatever. Um, I don't mind wasting all my pots on fire stuff because it's just good to have right like watch I got them both before that guy even stands up now this is just gonna be a mushroom in this chest not super important and I really hate that I didn't buy the cookbook that allows me to make the poison ailment curement because that's important <laughs> I should have bought that but I didn't. Oh shit, that was a total waste. I meant to heal. Anyway, that's as far as that direction goes. This is the shortest cave of all time. Now we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go through the mist. And you'll notice as soon as you step through the mist, there's nothing here. There's no boss. It's just a chest, right? So let's open it. And we're gonna steal. From the person it belongs to. So what do you know? It's patches, huh? So the trick of patches is guard counter. Much is the answer to a lot of enemies in this game, but guard counter him. It's all it takes. If you try to attack him, it's a little more annoying because he is uh, particularly defensive. He's got that big tower shield, right? And you will bounce off because it has a lot of stability. Wait, wait, please. I surrender. White flag and all. So this is what happens when you get him below 50% health. You can choose to either keep pounding him until he's just a pile of blood on the ground. <laughs> now you can choose to keep pummeling him until he's just a pile of flesh on the ground, which is, in my experience with this guy across from soft games, that's kind of what I would prefer to do, because I'm just going to like tell you guys up front, you can kill him, and it's not going to matter, because he does not have like an actual quest line in this game. I mean, if you keep him alive, and you keep following him across the map, yeah, there's some quests so there's he has kind of a quest line but it's not going to yield any like super rare item that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise if you had killed him the only reason i'm going to keep him alive is because he does change his inventory across the game as you keep uh progressing him to different areas and i'm going to want to buy that stuff from him because it'll make our playthrough a little bit easier but by all means 
if you hate this guy or if you accidentally keep attacking him and you and you mess up and he becomes hostile again and you have to finish the fight it's fine because he's going to drop his bell bearing which you can give to the finger merchant at the round table hold and you'll still be able to buy the stuff he sells so no pressure do you know? You're tarnished, like me. Now, now, how did I get that wrong? I took you for a demi-human or some such. <laughs> but an innocent mistake, I assure you. Well, water under the bridge. Now we're squared up. How about we play nice from now on? And you get another opportunity here to either say, yeah, sure, that's fine, or you can say, no. A true lady of reason. Just what I like about you. I'm Patches. Patches the Untethered. Tarnished like you, only free-spirited. Nomadic, you might say. Only for now, those retired soldiers turned bandits. Oh, they're paying for my gruel. In exchange for my, well, showing them the ropes. But honestly, this looting racket is bloody terrifying. Frankly, I'm ready to wash my hands clean. Maybe set up a legitimate shop. So don't be a stranger. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. <laughs> don't forget to pop back for another visit, friend. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. Alright, and just like that, what we can do is we can go back to the Grace. And once we run back to him, we'll set up shop. Well, he's going to set up shop and then we can uh, we can buy stuff from him. Now, note, you are going to have to kill these guys again. But, as long as you don't ring the damn bell, you don't worry about it. Oh my god. <laughs> I say, as long as you don't ring the bell. But, what fun would that be? <laughs> Alright. Jump. Fire pod. Alright. The rest of them don't seem to want to follow. Highwayman Gauntlets. Alright. That's a good item. I'm going to waste my last fire pot. Because it's damn worth it. It got all of them. Alright. Now we're going to go back in here. And see Patches. And we even rang the doorbell on the way in so he knows we're coming. We're excellent guests. Note that the treasure chest is there. Again. Well, it's not the same one. But it's another one. Well, nice of you to drop in, finally. It's all a bit ad hoc, but I'm sure you'll find something. And welcome to Patches Emporium, where you won't need a refund, because everything's top-notch. Alright, so I like how he always changes his name in these games. He's uh, Patches the Untethered in this game, and he's Patches the Hyena in Demon Souls, and Unbreakable Patches in Dark Souls, I think. So... He sells some good shit, alright? And like I said, even if you kill him, you can still get that stuff. But this is the most important item he sells, is Margit's Shackle. You can use this in your fight with Margit, and it will give you, like, a two and a half second advantage, which, for some people who are struggling against him, could be everything you need to win. It's expensive. It's 5,000 runes, but if you keep it, it's reusable in your inventory. It's not a one-time use. And it will serve you more than once. He also sells a stone sword key. It's bloody expensive, but it's worth it if you need it right now. Script stone, grace mimic, gold pickled foul foot. This is a good one. Because right here, it boosts your runes that you get. We want to be able to create this item. Because there are going to be some times where we're going to use it. And it's going to give us a good boost in runes. And everything else he sells, this is probably the second best thing he sells. It's uh, It takes up a talisman slot, but it's destroyed upon death, and so you don't lose all your runes. It's uh, basically a ring of sacrifice from Dark Souls. And I don't really need anything else of his, so we should be good. Yeah, I had those bandits make a clean break. Now they're all suppliers, and good ones at that. I mean... They don't understand a word I'm saying, but it hardly matters. We have a natural connection. <laughs> They're all foot soldiers, survivors of a defeated army. 
worked to the bone by their high and mighty lord, only to be thrown out with the rubbish. <sighs> it's the same old story everywhere I go. <sighs> to hell with it all. Hmm. Wondering what's inside the treasure chest. Well, it's a... Nothing too special. Just something I'm saving as thanks for a very valuable customer. But then again, it would fetch some spectacular coin. And besides, this valuable customer could be a long time coming. Huh? Everything is give and take. Give and take. Cheers for that! Interesting. So it almost sounds like he's tempting you to open it, right? Well, the only thing this chest will do is, for one, it doesn't matter. He's going to be gone if you open it. It's going to take you somewhere else. There are several chests in this game where as soon as you open them, there's a smoke that comes out. And you can roll away and avoid being kidnapped by the smoke, but they're called cursed chests and they will teleport you to somewhere far away that you're not supposed to go, typically much higher level areas. This one in particular will spit you out over... Where is it going to take you? Uh, I believe it's somewhere down in here in the mist wood, so not super duper far away because we're right here. It will take you way, way down here in the mist wood, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because we are going to go there next once we clear this area surrounding the lake but if you open it you're going to trigger him to move to his next area so i don't recommend opening that unless you are fine with him moving and i'm not there are some things i'm probably going to come back and buy from him at some point but uh i believe what triggers him to move is your fight with margit and he mentioned the bandits that we just killed mercilessly, which are the highwaymen. Hideously stained and dented gauntlets worn by former foot soldiers who have turned to banditry. So these are essentially like ex-soldiers of Godric, we can assume. Because that's what he said. He said they were thrown out, right? So we're going to rest. And before I do anything, I'm going to make more firebombs. I don't care that they're called fire pots, like they've been called fire bombs since Demon Souls. I'm gonna call them fire bombs. And like I just mentioned before, now we're gonna head straight into this other cave that we discovered all the way at the end. And this is going to be another intermediate level one. It's not gonna be super difficult. Hey, there's jellyfish. And it's not going to be, like, really challenging by any means, but it's not going to be easy either. This isn't going to be, like, right in between somewhere. Always pick up your mushrooms. And don't worry about the slow-moving slimes across the ground. They suck. So we've got ourselves another set of catacombs. The Merc Water Catacombs. So we'll rest at this guy. See if we can level up. We can. All right. Now I'm really pushing for 24 dexterity because I need that for my next flail that I'm gonna get. And you guys will love this when you when you see it. Okay. So did you miss this? I didn't. Let's equip these guys. So we know what to do, right? Let's take a look first. You got this guy hanging from the ceiling, you got that guy on the wall, you got two of them up in that room. Big yuck. And then we got this guy right here. Alright, so let's play it smart, right? One already dropped down. Looks like he's going to come running after us. And keep your shield up against these guys, for sure. Because we're going to handle them the way we've been. If I can hit them. There we go. Let me do my sloppy heal. 
I've not really mentioned the second miracle that I have that you start with. It's called Assassin's Approach, and all it does is silence your footsteps and it decreases your fall damage. I don't have a need for either of those perks. Not right now. Like, I'm sure it'll come in use a little bit later, but not now. And the fall damage effect and the silencing of your steps also affects Torrent. So, if you're doing some platforming, it's smart to use it if you've got it, but we just don't need it at the moment. Urgent Heal is the valuable one. I missed completely. There we go. Great. So let's make sure they're not on the sides as well. Yep. Would you look at that? What the hell? My shield was up. It's weird. I really don't know how that guy hit me. It's kind of strange. Okay, we're gonna pick these guys up. And the reason we're picking up these Glove Warts and Grave Warts is because the girl we talked to with the Red Hood that was talking about the grafting and the spider, she's going to upgrade our Spirit Ashes, like our Wolves. Okay, so we have a split in the path here. I'm going to choose to go forward. There's a platform right here. Let's use it to our advantage. It shoots fire. All right, and now we don't have to kill them. That guy. Sneaky, sneaky. The value of keeping your shield up at all times. It's priceless. All right, so heavy door opened up somewhere. First thing we want to do, right, is we want to find a way to move the heavy door that leads us to the boss. Which is right there. So, this one, they're assholes on this part. You're thinking, okay, the last one I ran up to, they shot from the direction of the enemies and hit them in the back. No, this time, you see these three holes in the steps. I'll try to light it up so you can see it. That's where it's going to come from. So, you're going to get shot right in the ass if you step on it this time. I really don't recommend it. The enemies can't trigger it. So, pull them one at a time. Doesn't matter if they step on it. it only matters if you step on it. Fuck these guys, especially in numbers. My god, they can be so annoying. They really piss me off later on. Where is he? I knew it. I knew there was a third one. Get dead, pal. I'm surprised I'm not getting any drops from these guys. Normally they drop something. So, if memory serves, I believe down here is going to be the hammer guy. With the chain. Let's find out. Can't use any ashes against him, which is unfortunate. Well, let me find out, actually. Use this. Oh, you can! Okay. Okay, maybe I'll show that off. Here, boys. Okay, so he has mega reach with that thing. Like, he can... Wow, these guys are doing good. <laughs> And he also has that grab attack, which is bad news. You can backstab him. It's great. Alright. So I'll let them get aggro. There we go. Now we'll do this. Yeah, that weapon art's nice. I like it. So he does the barbaric war buff. When he does that, he'll do more damage, and he will take less damage, too. So you can block most of his attacks. He only does physical damage, right? He doesn't do any kind of magic damage, so you don't have to worry about it chipping through the shield or anything. These wolves are doing surprisingly good against him. Nice, we got a bleed. So you can stagger him as well. Just watch out for that grab attack. It's so annoying. Not that it'll kill you in one hit or anything, but it does enough damage to where it may as well. Let's finish this guy. And we got Banished Knight Angle as uh, 
our first like special summon. So let's take a look at him real quick. He is considered a special spirit summon. He costs a lot. He costs 100 FP. But him, like the other Banished Knight Ashes that we're going to end up finding, he's great. He does a lot of damage. He's got a lot of health, a lot of defense. He's great for pulling aggro. And he does these big long sweep attacks with the Halberd. And he uses uh, storm attacks. It's really great. And each of these guys has their own unique story, too. One of the two knights dubbed the Wings of the Storm. Despite his banishment, he rejected the invitation of the grace-given lord, instead keeping watch over a masterless castle for many years, gaining renown as a hero of the fringes. So, the other one that we're going to get is uh, going to have, like, dual swords. He's going to have two knight swords, and uh, his name is Banished Knight Oleg, I think is his name. So this guy, his name is Ingvel. Yeah, I think his name is Banished Knight Oleg, the other one, and we'll get him too. But there's no other item down here. These things, they're strange. I think these are Erd Tree Roots. I mean, I could be wrong, but there's always these corpses that are like all over them. That these people clearly died just like this, climbing all over these things. But uh, I'm not really sure what the lore aspect is with these things. It, it could be a reference to the chaos from Dark Souls. Who knows? So that's that whole cave. And... For some reason, I feel like I lost out on something with that guy. I could have swore he dropped his hammer. Maybe he doesn't. Okay, well, anyway, that guy's not super challenging. Watch out for the grab attack. His attacks otherwise aren't super duper hard to get away from. He's he's not impossible to fight. Now we've done all of this. We, I think I want to go do this one that's up in here as well. It should be like right there where the cursor is. But I think to end this episode, we're going to go kill Agil, the dragon. So let's go bring, let's go bring this guy down. And it might take me a minute to kill him. He requires quite a bit of patience to fight, but there's a very particular mechanic behind fighting him that is important to explain. So let's jump down here and he's going to come crashing down out of the sky. Here he comes. And he kills all those dudes. Alright, we, we, we do okay damage to him. We do alright. Okay, so with Agil, make sure you lock on. Like, when you're ready to actually hit him, try to lock on. When you're up near him like this, do not lock on. So, I'm going to try to proc bleed on this guy. That's what I want to do. Here's his melee attack. Run directly away from him when he does that. When he does this attack, straight to the side. To the side and away, because it fans out. If you get far away from him, he's going to try to hit you with a fire attack, right? So, sprint with Torn, close the distance, and go for his wing. Now, he has an AoE slam when he uses his foot like that. Don't get caught on it. And again, when he does the bat, just run straight away from him. And then you can get a maybe one or two hits in on him. So most of his fire attacks will fan out like that. So you want to be running directly away from him when he does that shit. This is free damage, because he cannot hit his own wing with the fire attacks. You're completely safe to hit him when he does that. Move away when he does the AoE foot attack. And then just lay into him. That's probably his easiest attack to get away from. He's going to hit the ground facing you. I'm going to bait the fire real quick. I'm going to stay just out in front of him. Get him to use a fire attack. Well, wish he would. Instead, he's going to do the horn attack. That's fine. Come on, man. Fire. There we go. 
try to get another bleed on him if I can. Now, I do not recommend trying to attack his back legs, and I don't recommend getting behind him. And sometimes he bugs out like this, which is super annoying, but uh, he'll come back. Don't worry. Come on over, pal. I don't have all day. We're nearing the end of an episode, and I respect these people's time. Now, sometimes when he does this dumb shit, he'll just disappear, and he'll reappear out here in the center. But don't worry, his health isn't going to go back to full or anything like that. Don't worry, just uh, let's let him crawl back down here towards us, even though he's incredibly slow and awkward. That's it. Come on. And we'll get him to do another fire attack so we can try to get in. And I totally lost my bleed builder, my my bleed meter, unfortunately, because there was way too much downtime in between my hits. But it's all right. He's almost dead. And again, to get away from that slam, that's all you got to do is just go straight away from him. Okay, and we'll move away because of the fire. Come on, man. More fire. And do not get behind him. His tail attack is pretty devastating. It does a lot of damage. Wait for him to turn around. Come on, man. Fire. That's a form of fire. Not necessarily what I wanted, but... Oh, he's bugging. My goodness, he's bugging hard. <laughs> Don't expect as many bugs when you fight him. This is uh, this is a bit excessive. All right, come on, man. Okay, so now that we got him out in the open, I'm gonna rush in, I'm gonna bait the fire attack. There we go. One. Two, one, two, almost, oh well. Alright, land. There we go. That last hit was kind of annoying to get, but... Great enemy felled. It's the first thing you noticed after you beat him. And we got a dragon heart, so he is not just... Uh, an enemy that was felt. He's a great enemy. And when you get his heart, it says a new draconic power is available at the Church of Dragon Communion. So, we're going to go take a look at that in just a minute. But first, we're going to pick up some of these items that we were too distracted to get during the fight. And I believe in the alpha footage, there was a grace out here in the middle. Like... That's what was supposed to happen, at least. There's supposed to be, like, a grace out here you can rest at after you beat him, but it's not the case this time. And that's fine. We don't, uh, we don't need it. Because there's one right outside of the lake on the hill. I'm gonna grab these, because, as mentioned before, I can't really explain why, but for some reason I feel compelled to collect them. Alright, I have, like a thing with with torch guys in this game because for some reason they're completely fucking invincible but whatever these guys aren't hostile i guess that's what i get i mean they, these guys don't want to hurt you to begin with all right we got a mutant poodle over here that is bad news he's certainly more challenging than regular dogs here we go the other guys aren't even really like hostile yeah there we go Get rid of both poodles. There's one thing I want to grab in here before we go any further. Oh, hi, Mr. Poodle. This is the big poodle. So this one is kind of challenging. Let me heal. Eee! There we go. So that one took a few hits to kill. He's basically like the white wolf version of the poodles. <laughs> as silly as that sounds. And we want to run down in here and grab this. This is kind of like our reward, I guess, for beating Aegeal. Fuck these rats. 
pull them out one at a time. Fire bombs are great for this part. Oh my god. And the, the wide sweeping attack of the mace, not the mace, the flail, is really good. It's working well for these guys. Yeah, being able to hit these guys with this thing is, like, great. And because that was considered a, a group of enemies, we got a flask back for beating them. Alright, this is what I want. It's a smoke chest. So, like I said before, this can be avoided. You can just roll away and you won't get kidnapped, which is fine. Um, this smoke trap in particular is going to take you to a terrible, terrible place called the Celiana Crystal Mines. We don't want to go there. Not right now. But I just want to be able to mark on the map and let you guys know that that there is where the chest is if you so wish to get teleported to that place. I don't. I have no desire to go there at the moment because that is a severely late game area that we don't want to mess with yet. But here, check this out. This little hidden spot, right? You never would have found it. Because normally, uh, per ruin, there's only one. There's two here. So that's what I wanted. The Twin Blade. This thing is a sick weapon. It does require quite a bit of dexterity. You need 18, but it's it's cool. I'm, I'm telling you, this thing, it's great. Like, 100%, <laughs> I recommend using the Twin Blade if you are trying to experiment with different weapons that you want to use. So that there is our reward for beating Agil, is to be able to get to that chest. You can technically get to it before you beat him, but I like to think of it as a reward for beating him because it's buried in the ruins that are right behind him that you probably would not try to go scouring through if he was alive because he'd be trying to kill you. But we can't forget this. The fuck out of here. Stone sword key. Hell yeah. So, like I mentioned before, with the stone sword key... There are quite a few of them, right? Like, you're never going to run out. But you really have to try to find them. Like, you got to look for them. So the next place we're going to head... This dog will lose aggro on me. Hopefully. Okay, I think we're good. We're going to go see Jura in this spot again. Because his dialogue is going to change. Beautiful work. Selling that dragon, and as such, there's something you might like to know. The heart you brought back. It's used in dragon communion. If you should find yourself overcome by hunger for the heart, yearning for its strength, then seek the decrepit church on the little island off the western coast. Interesting. So, remember how I mentioned when we found the dragon church that... It looks like you're physically eating the heart out of your hand, kind of like an apple. Well, he used the word hunger. He said if you find yourself hungering for the strength of the heart, I think he's literally trying to tell us if it looks tasty and you feel like eating it. You must not forget, though, those who partake in dragon communion will one day shed their humanity, their hunger for dragon, their yearning. Only worsens. Until the floodgates burst, unleashing eternal torment, the strength of a mighty dragon. Magnificent, but deadly. It's no surprise that dragon communion is ruinous. So that bit, I have not entirely explored yet. I don't know about, like, what he means when he says, like, the... The, the t eternal torment or whatever after a certain amount of dragon power, but I do know this. As you continue to use the dragon abilities, your character's eyes will morph and turn into dragon eyes. So there is definitely some kind of like passive effect that happens when you are uh, using the dragon abilities. Like, so the more often you use the dragon incantations, the more your eyes start to morph into dragon eyes. It looks really cool, but I don't know what the other part means. I don't know the whole thing about 
bursting into eternal ruin and all that stuff. You must not forget, though, those who partake in their hunger for dragon until the floodgates burst strength. Heaven might is no surprise. Okay. So, I guess it's good that we can listen to him because it doesn't really... It doesn't really uh, matter to me. I'm not going to use the dragon incantations. I might use, like, one or two, but... I'm not going to use them consistently. I'm not going to need them for anything. And look, would you look at that. As we head into Western Limgrave, we see exactly what I was talking about. The battles that are happening between the Godric soldiers and the Demi-humans. So they don't give a shit about us right now. They're fighting each other. I'm pretty sure I grabbed this item over here. I'm 100% certain. Yes, I did. All right, so... This is not new. We have covered this area. Like, we have been through all of here, which is where this battle is taking place. And as we head further south, like, we're going to take this main road, and we're going to go further into south Limgrave, since we've pretty much covered all of western Limgrave. We've completed all of this. We're going to head south now and go in this general direction. But here's what I would like to do. I'm going to go to the seaside ruins. I'm going to see if I have a dialogue to talk to Melina, and if I don't, there's an event that I want to take care of first. Okay, now we can talk to her. Me. I'm searching for my purpose, given to me by my mother inside the earth tree, long ago, for the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless. There is something for which I must apologize. I've acted the finger maiden, yet can offer no guidance. I am no maiden. My purpose was long ago lost. Interesting. So, she's acting the part of maiden, but she's essentially grading herself and telling us that she's doing a terrible job, which... I don't know. That has yet to be seen. Melon is an interesting character, and we're going to get more out of her as we keep going. But I know this episode is running a little bit long, but there's one more thing that I want to cover in here before we go. We are, in fact, going to get trapped by this chest. And we're going to go to the Crystal Tunnel, because we need to get to the Round Table Hold. So where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it was in here. Yep. There it is. Should be this one, I think. Nope. Never mind. Can we make it? Yeah! Alright. So it was this one over here. Go down here. I'm not worried about the stupid dog. Not worried about the stupid rats. Just gonna open the chest. We're gonna get kidnapped. I have a lot of souls slash runes right now. This is uh, probably not ideal for me to do right now because I don't want to lose these runes. <laughs> but uh, we do need to progress this event though. We need to get to the round table hold. So Agil was our first great enemy that we felled, which is exciting. This shit right here, this is not exciting at all. I'm going to cast this because I need every form of stealth I can get right now. So I'm not going to bother explaining what's going on here. I'm not going to talk about these enemies or any of this bullshit. The only thing you need to know about this place is that you need to fucking run. Like, do exactly as I'm doing fucking run as fast as you can don't look back run and I mean run to this grace don't bother there's good shit back there and we're gonna come back for it but all that matters is that we got the grace we can come back in any time once we have the grace if you continue to die in that place back there you will not go back to any grace because we were cursed notice how we can't warp every single grace we have is scratched out with a red line 
You have been trapped. You cannot travel to sites of grace until you rest at one. That's why it's important to haul ass to this grace. You can go back in there and try to mess with those guys if you want. We'd probably do fine against them because we have strike damage and an upgraded weapon. But this entire area out here, like everything going out that way too, is called uh, Kaled, and it's late game. We don't want to fuck with any of this. Let's rest at the grace and get the cutscene with Melanum. Well, good lord. It wouldn't be that easy, would it? Lame. Alright, we're going to have to run and find another grace. But that's okay, because there's one close by. Like, do you... Do you see this shit? This is all a bunch of nope. Like, none of this do you want to mess with. The only thing I want to mess with out here is this thing. Watch for this enemy squad that's patrolling here, too. These big things that shoot this stuff out, it's Scarlet Rot. Don't worry about them as long as you're out of reach of the Scarlet Rot. Like, it won't hurt you as long as you're out of reach. Okay, where does he go? Where does he go? Damn it, I bet I just barely missed him. Alright, so we're just going to stay on the path here. We know he's going to run this way course he juked me whatever <laughs> we know he's gonna come this way though so it's all good this one's path is particularly long and annoying but uh don't worry we'll be all right shit these guys are coming though all right no pressure Fuck. all right almost <laughs> almost got him there we go <laughs> poison blade it's not something super duper important, like I don't really need it that bad, but I got it anyway. Okay, do not fight these guys. They will kick your ass. Do not run out in their barefoot either. This is Scarlet Rot. It does not affect Torrent, but it will affect you negatively. Watch out for these dogs. Okay, and then we got the, uh, the dead dog stray ashes. We're going to activate this grace before these dogs rip us apart. Go, go, go. Here we go. This is what I needed. Forgive me. I've been testing you to determine if the Elden Ring would truly have you. If you had the metal to endure this long and arduous path. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the round table hold, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. All right, and if you use this option to go, she will take you there right now. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. Okay, and this is a very significant part of your playthrough. This here is essentially like your Firelink Shrine. You, when you get here, you're going to have your NPCs. This guy is going to be particularly important for us because he's going to teach us incantations. And a couple of these other guys, we're going to also further their quest lines. But, uh, yeah. Uh, this episode ran a little bit long, so I'm going to... And this one here, but it's a perfect place because we found our hub, we're at the round table hold, and uh, in the next episode, we're going to talk to some of the NPCs here, and then we're going to start pushing further south into Limgrave, and uh, I think the excitement is really going to ramp up. But uh, sorry for the length on this one. If you got all the way through it, uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching and joining me on this adventure through Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch you guys in the next video.